So guys, uh, this Mark Irish Bully TV. What you're seeing here, or what you're about to see here, is maybe a backward step of a uh, kefir grains, um, and how to make kefir, which is good for your dog's uh, digestive system and a healthy gut. So we're kind of going backwards. Sorry, apologies for. Uh, the dog parking there, she's a noisy little ficker. Um, so this is it, this is, so, and I will go and do the fourth part later, but this is what we have. So this is the kefir grains, which have been um, fermenting in here, in goat, so, sorry, this is also goat's milk in this, uh, and it's been fermenting in here for maybe, eight days it was the first time that i uh, put the kefir grains into the goat's milk so i wanted to give them a bit of time to grow if i wanted a better word or absorb the stuff um you know just let me hold on sorry apologies for the noisy dog um so yeah as i said it's probably sitting in there anywhere between six to eight days and I just want to give her a chance to grow. So this is the first time, well it's not the first time that I've looked at it, but it's the first time. So as you can see there, like the milk has separated from the water, for want of a better word, right? And what we're gonna do now is run it through. So what you need is all plastic. Everything you use is plastic. Don't let this stuff touch steel or it can kill it or can harm it I won't say kill it but you can see there lovely and creamy coming out and we're filtering it through a plastic sieve or sieving it through a plastic sieve rather than filtering it uh, and we'll see at the end of this what we have I'll leave the end in that for to put it back into and start the process again so so you just kind of rub it through the sieve and make sure that you don't kind of break up your little kefir grains I see a hair in it there and um, it's not surprising around here that there's a hair and then we just leave it there until it's done you know when you have seven dogs uh, you expect to see hairs and things no matter how hard you try and clean but look at it. so this is what we're left with these are the key for grains these are live and grown um, and I can't remember the girl's name, but I will get it before I post this video. So, these here, where are we going? These here are the kefir grains, and they're what ferments the goat's milk and turns it into a pre-probiotic, pre probiotic, sorry. Uh, so a probiotic it turns it into um, and these are priceless and they do this job probably when I was doing this prior to uh, these dying because they can die and we'll speak about that another time but I was turning them maybe every three days right so look they go back in here you know they are soft, but they're not that soft that they die. And I'll come back now, I'll just show you. So, I don't know if you can see that. I'll move that out of the way for a minute. So there's the goat's milk, right? Cleansing. You buy it in the supermarket. I will be using raw, unpasteurized goat's milk from now on, but this was just to get them alive. And then this is all you do with that. 
you just refill so far and then so it's important that this stuff breathes right so this is just you can use a, a cloth you know once it's breathable I just found that good old face mask uh, is equally as good and that's it that's that's that process sorry if I went off camera there that's that process so I just filled the goat's milk into this left about an inch away from the top and placed the face mask on top um, and that there is the start of my next batch and I leave that there for about three days so let's have a look at what what we got off that right so I'll just give her a see if you can see in here like it's it's a fairly creamy fairly thick you know um, and what I get out of it let me see the measure on that is about 400 mils so that container holds about 400 mils and this stuff here there's loads of stuff you can do with it uh, one guy says to me he uses this uh, the kefir along with the um, dictamus earth or diatomaceous earth as my American friends call it um, and feeds it to his pregnant bitch uh, which then when he has a litter starts the puppies off on it and uh, they get a good healthy immune system so okay I have to put this into a container now and put it into the fridge you can freeze these and make little treats out of them or you can just pour onto their uh, food and so okay it's important when you're starting them off to start them off with two tablespoons of it uh, just on their food you know and then work it up to whatever and what it's also I have noticed really good for is uh, clearing up any yeast so this is why I'm back doing this now because the Frenchie has yeast infections and it's not getting rid of it so this is nature's way again of working some magic and uh, I'm going to be giving it to the Frenchies I'll be giving it to them all but it's purely for the Frenchies and how I know that this stuff is working is I can see the redness going out of their nails and their nails becoming clear again or white or transparent whatever colour you want to call it or whatever colour the dog's nails are but that kind of reddish stain and in the nails and up the paws starts disappearing after a couple of days on this so look at I know we're, we're, we're touching on to kind of 8 30 minutes and um, so I'm just going to stop it now I'll just put this into a plastic bottle everything remember everything needs to be plastic don't touch this with steel uh, I don't really understand the reasons behind it but I heard it kills the kefir grains right so I don't even question it I don't try it I just accept you know and that's probably the best way you can do things in life is by just accepting the air the way they are uh, it's f fine actually I just see here underneath my barbecue block so here is an empty jar of kabusha which is what Raoul is always talking about uh, the fermented cabbage um, or sauerkraut right so that's an empty an empty jar that's cleaned out so this is this will now become my kefir and yes I am being mean I'm getting every drop out of it because the stuff is priceless you know and when you work hard to get it you want it all you know you want it all every every last drop of it out it's not going to be that mean but you know and hold yours all up but yeah 
get what you can out of it. You know, and then also make sure that you thoroughly wash all the utensils that you did. And here we go. You know, uh, if you if you don't believe me, I go I let the mail in now. Uh, tour. Uh, just for I'm gonna put it in a little ceramic bowl and let's see. Let's see whether he likes it or he doesn't like it. Right, so that'll be the final the final piece on it. I'm not putting too much well. Okay, he needs a bit right. So I'll just put that aside for a sec. I'll let him in. Come on. Her. Come on. In here. Now Look right after you buddy, right, let's see, come up, come down, come down Tor, let's see does Tor, Tor like it, I know he does, but let's see, where we go, oh. mm. come on, Tor, I know it's a different taste, <laughs> no, you're not having it, come on, come back, come on Tor, here. Come on. You know it's good for you. Come on. This is why you start them off on two tablespoons. Again, plastic tablespoons because it's raw goat's milk. So it is a little bit funky or is a required taste, but you can see that it will be eaten. Or drank. Uh, so look, he made a little bit of a lawyer on me there. Um, well, you can be guaranteed in a, in a couple of days that'll be slaughtered out of the um, the bowl straight away. He's in there. He can. He wants food. He wants more food. He's only either getting food, or he wants more. He's a greedy. Or high field driven dog. So, whoops, here he is back. Let's see when you go back to the bowl. Whoops, here's the camera. You going back to the bowl, Tor? Huh? You gonna make a lawyer out of me? You gonna make a lawyer out of me? Come on. Mm hmm. Yummy, yummy. Come on. <laughs> All right, look. There's no pressure on him, but well, that's our tar there, three year old male. And he has a couple of little yeast spots in this uh, male, and that'll be gone in a couple of days. So, look, thanks very much for listening. This has gone over, so I'm gonna probably edit it before I put it up. Mm -hmm. um, but, look, uh, the point of this was just to, um, to show you how to do it. You know, and help someone out who maybe has a dog with yeast problems. And look at, you know, here, because it's that time of the morning here in Ireland where I get up and I look after the dogs before I actually look after myself. So dogs are all fed, uh, watered, uh, and out into their kennels for the day for a bit of air. Uh, you know, look. Mark from IBTV, over and out. Thank you, guys.